Hi, Mrs. Cheney here, and I'm going to talk to you about the project that you're getting ready to start on the color harmonies. We studied color harmonies in class. You took notes. We had a quiz. And you know now that there are six harmonies, monochromatic, complementary, analogous, triadic, split complementary, and double split complementary. Now you're going to do a project using all six of those harmonies. And you need some supplies. You need your piece of illustration board. Okay. This is, you have two sizes. You have a huge one and a smaller one. It's the smaller one. Um, it says crescent on the back. It is 11 by 14 inches. If you have a ruler, you can measure it. And it is 11 inches by, my ruler's only 12, 14 inches. Okay, you need your 11 by 14 piece of illustration board. Um, you need something to use as a straight edge. Okay, a folder will work if you don't have a ruler. So that's something else you need. And you need a pencil for today. So you are going to come up with a concept and get it on your illustration board. And I'm going to show you some ways to do that. Before we begin, I want to look at the project itself. So... Let me figure out here, <laughs> hang on a minute, how to shrink myself. There we go, so you can see. So this is in Schoology in the painting class and it's the Color Harmonies Project, okay? The project title here is Color Harmony Study. And you're gonna look at the elements of art, of course, color, form, line, shape, space, texture, value, and we're gonna look at the principles of art. I'm going to look for contrast, movement, emphasis, balance, unity, rhythm, pattern, proportion, and variety. Obviously, color is a huge part of this, and you're going to be painting in shapes with the colors. So those are things in particular that I'm going to be looking at. You will create a piece reflective of six color harmonies. That means all six have to be on your project or you'll lose points. Okay? You will paint in what's called the hard edge technique. Hard edge meaning there's no shading at all. They're hard-edged shapes, and you're going to fill them in like a coloring book. You will discover true colors in color harmonies. You're going to use your acrylic paint. That's the paint that's in that red, the box with the red lid with the little cups. You can use brushes, your palette, um, your piece of illustration board. This dimension is incorrect. Um, I changed on you based on what I had. You're going to find a design of inspiration to make of your own. You're going to draw out the design in the hard edge style onto the paper. Assure that your design has lots of segments that could be colored in. A Nike swoosh is way too easy. It only has the Nike and then the background. You need it to have many, many areas because as you know, in say for instance, double split complementary, you need four sections that you have to paint in, okay? You're gonna paint each area in a different harmony using the hard edge style of painting. You may not shade with the paint. I don't wanna see shading or blending yet. You're gonna make sure that you use all colors introduced in class and check them off to make sure you've done each one. You're going to take photos in progress and upon completion. So I guess it would make sense to take a photograph of it all drawn out, have me approve it, and then move on to actually showing me um, the paintings. Okay, let's look at some examples. Before we begin, Andy Warhol is an artist who did this kind of style, okay? Andy Warhol is a pop artist from the 60s. This is a photograph of him here. He's known for the iconic soup can. This is um, Jackie Kennedy, a person that he painted. And then he was huge into doing celebrities, like here's Marilyn Monroe, he's done Elvis Presley, this is John Lennon. And these aren't paintings, but they're screen prints, meaning one image was made and then it was printed over and over and over on the canvas with different colors, okay? Like a rubber stamp is, you know how you rub ink on it and then you stamp it over and over? It's kind of that concept. Screen printing is different, but it's still a process of reproducing the same image, okay? So these aren't necessarily paintings. He did it with his soup can as well. He created one soup can, drew it, designed the whole entire thing, and then printed it over and over on things. Kind of like these little flowers. They're printed as well, okay? He did what's called, or what I'm calling, a hard edge style painting. There is no shading in these, none at all. Here are some examples of what students have done in my classes. This is Brooks. It is a portrait she did of herself. 
She drew it one time, traced it five more times, and then painted each one in a color harmony. So, for instance, this one here, since it's all reds, maroons, pinks, light pinks, white and black don't count, that has got to be the monochromatic one, okay? Um, here's another one. If you look at colors that are crossed from each other on the wheel, for instance, red and green, you've got variety of reds. You've got your reds, you've got your um, pinks, maroons, okay? And then greens are across the light greens and the dark greens. Again, black and white don't count. The one down below, that's got to be analogous. Colors next to each other on the wheel. So you get the point, all six are used. This person drew something different in each one, kind of like Disney characters, and she figured out by costumes that Snow White's costume is already triadic, okay? And um, I don't know all these characters. I had boys growing up, so I'm horrible about knowing all of these. Um, this is Pocahontas, I think, <laughs> but I'm pretty bad about this. Maybe that's Sleeping Beauty Bell. I have no idea. Point is, their costumes and based on their backgrounds, they're different color harmonies. So there's another example. Here's another girl that drew a face over and over and over again. Use the Rolling Stones logo over and over and over again. But this person did a different Disney character in each square. So you can do the same thing six times, which would be more boring than something done this way. But this way, it's just a little more intense to draw it out and paint it. A little more planning. Here's some roses six times, different color harmonies. Okay? And, and the list goes on and on. Cats, Grateful Dead some dogs. This person, big no-no, she tried to shade in the hair, but she did some really cool little imagery there of faces with the word groovy in it. Here's a girl that used to do um, BMX biking. I believe that's what it was called. And this was her screen, like from her phone. And so she used it, the picture of herself with her helmet on, and she used it because she liked that image. Very original that way. Rather than doing something from Disney or Mickey Mouse that has some... Um, copyright issues involved in it. So it's something to keep in mind. I'd rather you be original. But what if you drew one image and divided it into six sections? I know this is an example here that has more than six, but what if you did only one drawing and divided it up? That's an option too. Here's Jackie. I don't know if you remember her from the Andy Warhol print. Okay. So Jackie there was done and drawn and divided into six sections and painted. Here's a peacock. The sections are very random. We've got a chop there section, one here, okay? It doesn't have to be straight cutting. So this picture here was done diagonally divided. Or this train sectioned off in different ways. Or this way, each section being a different harmony. Or this one, she happened to have herself with five friends and painted their outfits and skin tone in six different harmonies and left the background black and white. Genius, very advanced thinking, love it. What am I worried about? Well, creativity is a plus for art shows, of course, and we're still going to have art shows. So let's do something fun and challenge yourself. But I'm also looking for how well you can stay in the lines, how well you can mix your colors, how accurate you are. Okay, this is that illustration board. Setting it down on the table. Okay, I'm going to show you... You can draw something. So let's say I draw a landscape and I've got my hills and my mountains and my stream and my river. And then I'm just going to take a ruler and I'm going to divide it into six random areas and paint each one. Okay? So yeah, that's one way you could do it. The other way where you divide it out, okay, you can use some math. This is 14 inches across. If you take 14 and divide it by 3, let me get my calculator. 14 divided by 3 is 4.6666666. Okay, so that means every 4.66666, wherever the heck that is on the ruler, okay, 6 would be a little more than 4, 4.5, four somewhere in there. And if I moved my ruler at 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, I'm close, okay, to dividing this into thirds. 1, 2, so I have 3, and then I could draw a line through the middle of it to come up with my 6 sections. You can work vertical, doesn't matter, but you've got to figure out how to divide your paper. Well, I'm not good at math, so I took a piece of paper the exact same size. So you don't have drawing paper at home that big that you can cut. That's okay. You can use a piece of newspaper, uh, magazines. It doesn't matter. You're just using it for math purposes. 
And then I folded it into thirds, okay? So let me get that board out of the way. Here's the piece of paper, same size as my board. Fold it into thirds, okay? And then fold it in half again. Not doing this very neatly for the sake of video and boring you. And then you now have six equal sections. Can you see that under the camera? So what I could do is draw in one space and then trace it onto my board six times. Let me show you how to trace it. Let's darken this so we can see it. I probably should use a ruler. I just lost my ruler. Okay, so now I gotta come up with something I wanna draw and I'm gonna do it six times. Let's say I wanna do that version. Okay, what am I going to draw? This is very first grade. If you do a little boat like this, um, you should not even be in foundations classes, okay? But let's say that's our image. We're going to draw a little boat six times. Let me show you a trick to get it on this board six times. So you would draw your image, do a really nice job of it, figure out what you're going to do within that space. Keep in mind, you could do this vertical, okay? It doesn't matter. So there's my image. Now, I'm gonna take a number two pencil. It can't be mechanical. I just wanna tell you that so this trick works. You're gonna flip it upside down and you're gonna scribble all over the back of it. Now, the key to this is being even. Even shading, very dark, filling in all the areas, edge to edge, corner to corner. I don't sing. Okay, that just reminded me of that squirrel dance. <laughs> okay, so again, I would take my time. I'm going to line this up on my board. Okay. Then with another pencil, because mine just went dull, with a pencil. Now, that one just broke. <laughs> I am going to draw by tracing over my drawing. This is how you would do the same image six times. This is not how you have to do the project, it is just a tip. I'm pressing pretty firm. Okay, so let's say you draw some beautiful roses and you want those six times on your board. Okay, what happened is now I scribbled all over the back of this, right? So it pushed that graphite onto my board. Ta-da, I have one, okay? Now, I would take my ruler, I would mark my little edges on my board, I would draw my lines, and then I would scooch it over and trace it again. You may have to refresh the back a few times, okay, if it starts to get lighter. It gets it on there enough where you can see it. Now I can go over it with a pencil and clean it all up, and then I can figure out my plan. Let's say I want to do this one monochromatic. Let's say I want to do it in blues, okay? So then I'm going to take blues, light blues, dark blues, and paint the whole thing in a mixture of blues. Say the next one's complementary. I'm going to do blue and orange. I'm going to mix a variety of blues, a variety of oranges, and paint the whole thing in blue and orange. Remember, black and white do not count. So black and white make gray. You could also use gray anywhere you want. There are safe colors, freebies that you can use to help break up your space. That's what I've got for you for now.